This is a jet powered RC car. And this is an airport runway moments before I attempted to break a land speed record. Going for power run now. At this airport in a remote corner of the UK, people gather a few times a year to drive their model cars as fast as they can. And for the past couple of months, I've been constructing, testing and perfecting a car of my own design to shake up the competition and hopefully get the record for the fastest remotely operated model car to be powered by a jet engine. I've actually been working on this project for over a year now, with the first version of the car from 2022 serving as a good learning platform to teach me how to build a bigger, twice as powerful and much more capable car. This car is powered by a rather large JetCat 220 engine, fixed to a strong aluminium chassis with a 3D printed nose and lots of electronic gizmos to make it all work. On its first shakedown at a local racetrack, it had performed brilliantly, being super stable thanks to its streamlined bodywork and large fins. On its first day, we got it to 70 miles an hour, but knew there was plenty more that this car had to offer. It had only been using a fraction of the available power and never even went full throttle. If we could get this car to a longer and wider piece of tarmac, it should be straightforward to hit the Guinness World Record target speed of 93.2 miles an hour. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to develop my own wheels for the car, so I'd have to use standard foam tyres and hope that they'd survive the insane speeds that they'd be rotating at if the car ever went to full throttle. That being said, I did have time to improve the radio connection between the car and the controller, so I shouldn't have any range issues. Next, I added kill switches for emergencies and practicality. Now it was time to tackle the third problem of actually getting to the event, which was scheduled to happen on the first weekend of July, which even for the UK should have had sunny weather and calm winds. There were loads of other people at the event, each trying to up their personal best speeds, using a variety of mostly off-the-shelf electric cars, but some with a few interesting modifications. We had loads of interest in our vehicle, which to be fair might have been because it more resembled a missile than a car. Using my skateboard to ride away from the car with the transmitter, I was surprised to find that the range seemed to be better than what we needed it to be. So I can hardly see the car right now, it's so far away, I mean I can't actually see it. We now needed to demonstrate to the event officials that the car was safe to operate by firing up the engine, but before we could get the chance to do that, the rain returned. This was all pretty frustrating, but at the same time I was starting to appreciate just how many challenges land speed record breaking can throw at you. Thankfully, the weather improved and the track dried out quickly, so it was now time for the first engine run-up. Watched carefully by Stuart the Scrutineer to make sure that the engine would shut off and the brakes apply in the case of an LOS, a loss of signal, and that the car could be started and stopped safely. The starting line now. Now all we have to do is set a world record. Good luck. Yeah. No. Good luck to you. This jet car was complex to run with a whole load of unknowns, and although proven up to 70 miles an hour, it was about to drive into uncharted territory. Okay, going for throttle up now. Go go go. Beautiful! Hey! Got the record. Yeah. And just like that, we'd got the record. Calling. Hey! 94. 94. 94. 94. Yes. Well done. Hey, well done. Just about. Nice one, man. <laughs> so we're getting ready for the very next run, and um, we're going to be using foam tires this time because we're going to be pushing it up much higher than before. So these new tires, they've just come out of a 
out of the bag and they need balancing. The wind had dropped and conditions were looking more favourable. What would the jet car do when holding open the throttle for a little bit longer? Right, time for the second run of the day. As with every run, this could end in disaster. So I checked everything, made sure the course was clear. Clear the door, come with yours. Okay, thank you. And opened the throttle. So we've got uh, the nose cone here. 137. 137, well done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow the car had gone through the gates at 137 miles an hour, lost its nose for some reason, and then continued onwards to stop safely even with its radically altered aerodynamics. Yeah, not great. Unfortunately, we found out that this run wouldn't count as an official record, as the car needed to remain in one piece which was fair enough. We decided it was sensible to return to base and analyze the problem in the morning. When we got to the runway, there was an even stronger crosswind than the day previous. The nose was repaired with some spare 3D printed sections and now safely bolted to the base of the car. I wanted to take it easy and have another attempt at a similar speed to run number two to officially nudge the record up from 94 miles an hour. So with that, I positioned the car in the same place, slightly back from the control tower. And then again, it all went quiet and it was all down to me not to make a mess of it. With a car that I'd spent three months building with a jet cat engine on board worth thousands of dollars and with potentially thousands of people going to watch this on the internet I felt a huge pressure I just needed to keep it on the track And just like that, it was all over. Oh dear. This was truly the most heartbreaking crash I'd ever experienced. Just as things were looking up and the car had looked set to achieve so much more, I'd made the wrong call, which resulted in the car being swept across the runway by the crosswinds and destroyed in seconds. The wind speed had been simply too high and the flat face on the side of the car had acted like a sail. The wind pushing the car to the side of the track where it had hit a recessed drain cover, jumped into the air and catastrophically exploded upon landing. The car had been destroyed, but it had achieved a great thing during its short life. We'd achieved what we set out to do, we got a world record, and I'd finally experienced some of what those great record breakers had experienced during their turbulent record attempts, albeit on a smaller scale. Yeah, we got to 94 point uh, something miles an hour. Officially, that's a Guinness world record. I'm really, 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 really pleased. Thank you.